Hello and welcome with another uh, video from MicroStrategy Rooster. The topic today will be custom groups. I will talk about how to create custom groups and how to use them today. I'm going to use the area under public objects. I've already created a custom group and a report that we will, I will demonstrate just because I wanted to uh, save time and cover as much different uh, custom properties for custom groups. There's a lot of customization that you can do with custom groups. First of all, I want to talk about um, the difference between custom groups and consolidations. Consolidations allow you to bundle the elements of an attribute. For example, if you had year as an attribute, you can have 2008 and 9 be one year or one group and 2010, 11, one group, like we showed in the consolidation video. However, you can also do something uh, more advanced than that in custom groups by adding different attributes from different uh, groups. So let me start by creating a new custom group and demonstrating the power of a custom group. First of all, you can click here and you start, you can name your custom group, so I'm going to call it custom group 1. You can do it just like any filter, attribute or set or report or filter and we'll talk about this later, the custom group banding. So it's just like creating a filter, you can create an attribute qualification set, add a shortcut to report or filter, okay? So let's just do the attribute and let's do year, okay? And the elements, you can add elements just like you're adding it to a filter and there you go. My first custom group is got two years, okay? Now, if this is all you're trying to do, please use a consolidation. There's no point of using custom group if you're grouping, if you're trying to do this, for instance, CG2 and year and something like that. If you're, this is what you're trying to group by, your uh, custom group, then you're not really achieving much because what does a custom group do? It creates multiple basically pieces of your report. The first piece will have this and the second piece will have this part. But if you're using year, the same dimension here, you can just use a consolidation and have one consolidation be 2008 and 9, another consolidation be 10 and 11. So when do I use a custom group? Well, that's when you're not using the same attribute if you're looking at attributes for instance in this case we do something like month and month of the year the ID for example is 12 so the first custom group is this and the second custom group for December does it make sense probably not but I'm just showing you how custom groups can allow you to use different uh, attributes okay you can also use a different dimension, so it doesn't have to be from the same dimension. It could be uh, country, and it could be element, add, USA, okay? So one group, one filter is by shows you these two years, and one will show you the country in USA, okay? Uh, you also can Let's do custom group three. You also can do something with metrics. Again, it's simple, metric. And let's do it at what level? Let's do it at year. Okay. Type metric, what year, and let's do revenue. Okay. Rank, top, three and you can also do a break by so if you want to do it by year and break it by a quarter you can do that so you can do a break by quarter this is just adding more granularity to your custom group so i'm just showing you how you can use different create different custom group let's do custom group four and here you can add a report or short fil shortcut to a filter. So you already have a filter or qualification that's built like revenue, rank of revenue, top three by year and quarter. You can just reuse it rather than recreating it here. And talking briefly about custom uh, group banding. Again, it's by metric. So let's do revenue just because we know, oops, misspelled it if I'm not sure. 
I can just go and select it. So you can do it by value, rank, or percent. Here what we're doing is we're creating groups. So based on the result of revenue for a specific level, let's just do product item. So here we're saying for revenue of item, on the metric value, on the revenue value, create a band that starts at 1 and the, the value 1000 and in each band stop at 100 so it's gonna say 1 to 100 200 to 300 300 to 400 now we're talking about revenue 400 to 500 dollars etc if you're not sure what your revenue is and you're not familiar with the data you can also do banding by count and say count from the first from the first item to the 100 dollar and stop every time you, you hit 100 dollars so it's counting the rows basically based on the revenue value so it's saying you know go from 1 to 100 100 to 200 etc but here's where it gets really neat if you're doing rank so 1 and let's stop at 10 so 1 to 10 and we just need 2 so it will be 1 to 5 and 5 to 10 if you do 10 it will be 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 each one is a step if you do one step it will be just one band one big band so this is the number of bands if you do 3 it will take 10 minus 1 9 divided by 3 so it will do 1 to 4 4 to 7 7 to 10 so this is just going to subtract these two and divide it by this number to produce a set of, a number of bands okay so it's that's how sql it translates into sql so one will be from 1 to 4 4 etc uh if you do it by percentage you might want to do something like 0 to 10 and only have two bands so the less than 50% and the bigger than the first 50% would be your two bands okay so these are all different ways you can do this with the band you can have banding points meaning manual you can say oh my first one would be from 10% 0% to 10% and my next one would be my second band this is the label that I'm getting this will show on your report from 10 to 100 percent if I don't like it I can always remove it okay and then finally I can do it by distinct metric values so there are your your metric values might have you might have a range say of a thousand metrics values and you might want every distinct metric value to be in its own band uh, not sure where this would come in very handy but this is an option that MicroStrategy gives you if you need distinct metric value banding all right so I'm gonna close this because I created another one and I'm just going to show you what I did with this. This is similar to the one I showed you, but here I formatted it. There's something called the display options. I'm, in this one, I'm saying show me the header and the values. So it's going to show me CGI1, and it's going to show you a number. For every metric, it'll show me CGI1 and a corresponding metric. It'll show me the individual years, the individual items. Okay, for this one, I said only show me the individual items. So this is the rank, the revenue, top five. So it should be seeing the call centers, the five top call centers by revenue. In this one, I said only show me the element name, which is CG2 for books and electronics so I looked at I filtered by these two categories books and electronics I bundled them up and I'm only gonna show metrics associated with both not the individual and this one is the banding the banding I can do you know show the elements show the individual and show everything and here it even allows you to expand to more detail okay so you can have limited detail or a lot of detail let's just do the lot of detail I'll show you how that looks like 
Here it'll just one less level of detail, which is the top. It won't show you CG4, but because we're demonstrating, let's just show everything. Now, the selection here is not just the display, it'll also impact the SQL, because if you're only showing it at this level, SQL has to group differently than you've shown it at the individual, and if you show it for all, it'll have to group, it'll have, have, a, it'll have a pass for this level, and it'll have a pass for this level. So depending on how much more levels you add, you might be increasing your SQL complexity. So I just want to warn you about it. It's not just something to be taken lightly. Alrighty. So I already had this saved. And I'm going to run this report. So I embedded it in a report and I just used one metric, revenue. And see in the first one, I displayed the element, the high level, and the individual elements. And here I only displayed the individual elements, the top five. Here I only displayed the group. And here I displayed everything, the three levels. So I had the group, the element, and the individual. Here I did from zero to five percent, from five percent to ten percent. You could edit the titles here. I'll show you how to edit the titles and you can sort things differently. So this is just gives you an idea and if I look at the SQL, it's going to have multiple passes. Let me clean up my SQL quickly. All right, so here we go. And all right. Let me do intermediate tables. Let's just do a temporary view so you can see what I'm talking about in a smaller screen. So, for example, you will have. Oops, here we go. So you have at the call center level, bring the revenue. <coughs> and here it's trying it's it's taking everything up to the uh, oh it's using a dummy here. This is for the that whole ranking and and bundling that Mike Shai is trying to do in the analytical engine. And also you have revenue at the item level and then it sends it to the analytical engine and it's trying to do the different banding so the banding is happening in the MicroStrategy analytical engine not in the SQL but it's showing you what it's doing saying oh I'm gonna break it and I'm gonna rank it and then it's showing you one pass by the different years and the individual items for the different years and it's doing it at the call center level and then it's doing it for the categories and then come back to the items item item and then bundle so there's a lot in the SQL if you're interested in how this is generated uh, my strategy engine specialist uh, uh, manual will give you more detail I'm not going to go into the detail it's a lot it's tedious and it it's just if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I can give you more information about it. But for now, let's stick to the fundamentals. All right. So I'm going to close this and show you two more properties that we didn't touch upon. So I showed you the display options. You can also format, right? But you can also move your categories up and down. So you can reorder things either from here or by moving them up and down manually. And there's also a custom group option here under custom groups, which says, do you want to enable hierarchy display or disable it? Do you want to enable subtotals or disable it? Now, depending on your bands and your groups, this may or may not work. So let's say enable this and I disable this and see what happens. Okay, save and close. Hopefully we didn't create an error, but it shouldn't be. So notice what happened everything got lined up in one column this may be a need for you so it's saying here's one custom group and here's its two items here's the five but we didn't display the the header of that custom group here only the header and here the header and the brands and the different items within the band so that's the hierarchical view we enabled subtotal meaning when I go here and I click subtotal I can enable it so it's going to put all the values and again I said 
this is not going to make a lot of sense because what does it mean? It really means nothing in this case because these are just totally different dimensions and a subtotal is meaningless. So let's go back here. So typically you want to keep this enabled for easier visibility and this dis disabled. This is just showing you does the element header need to be on top or at the bottom. That's just the display. And here you can have no interaction with the report filter or some interaction or full interaction. Meaning here only the filters within the custom groups are generated for the different custom groups. Here bring the filter from the report and merge it into each custom group. And here only bring the filters that are not related to the same dimensional filtering in each custom group. So for example if a custom group had filter by years and your report had a filter by years it's gonna ignore the year filter in your report and just take the year filter in your custom group element but if you had something like um, customers certain customers in your report and you chose this option and here in your custom group you had years it's gonna merge year and custom customers of your ch filter into one here it's gonna merge anything so if you had year 2008 and in your filter you had in your report filter you had year 2009 you're gonna get an intersection of nothing and get no data so you gotta be careful about which choice you choose here I typically and most people will keep it as the, as the default the default is this one no interaction it, it gives you more control if you really want it to be uh, interactive you want to manually set it okay so let's do this and uh, okay what else did we not go okay and the final thing is drill maps just like any attribute a custom group can have a drill map so it can drill up down cross and to a different template again it's behaving exactly like an attribute it allows you to drill into different directions and this is pretty neat because sometimes you know you want to allow your users to drill from a custom group into more detailed reports so you'd use a template drill for instance okay and uh, this will uh, wrap up today's demonstration hopefully in the last uh, 15 minutes or so I was able to give you the custom groups in a nutshell and uh, uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed it thanks